This video is a supplement to my triple arch build. Um, you can see here I've turned on the triple one of the triple arches, and if you look a little closely on the video, you will see the tarp arch is white, and as you run your way down, they get dimmer and dimmer. So what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm going to show you how to do some power balancing, so that you can uh, get a full the full effect of the arch no matter what color you put on it. So let's get going. So I thought I'd show you how much the voltage has dropped at the end of the trip, the last strip. So this is connected to the third. It's got a pigtail connected into the output. And there you can see it's 7.4, 7.39 volts. That's a big drop and that's why it's dropped to the, to the yellowish color on the arch. So let's go over how the arches are wired. Okay, so for the outer arch right here on the right hand side, my right hand, probably your left on the, on the video screen, um, it goes on this outside arch, it goes this direction here, and then bounces back to the middle arch to here, and then it connects the inside arch and comes back. It zigzags back and forth. When you set it up in X lights, it will know that so it gets you, uh, so you get all the effects you want to get. So, but with that, keep that in mind here. And so, what I'm going to do here is up right here between the second and third arch the middle one and the inside arch, I'm gonna put a T and I'm gonna connect that, uh, that power balancing in between it. That way I got power, essentially uh, the native power coming from the controller at the beginning of each one of these strips. And so all of them should look identical that way. The power will be balanced. With these female ends, with these wires that came from the end of a pixel string actually, um, you'll see this stripe line here. Uh, that is the negative line. And the right hand side is your positive line. There's this particular one had just some general writing on it. And then the middle is the data. I don't need the data line for this since it's for power balancing. So I'm going to strip the heart part with my fingers here. I'm going to cut away the data line. All right, and now I'm just gonna strip off a little bit on the end. So now I have both sides stripped and ready to go. Right here, I see the, the first one that was done. And you just need to make sure that you have the, the V plus and the V minus lined it up correctly. So I just verified that. I'm going to put these connectors both together and this one here and I squish them in together and then I'm going to set the metal portion of the heat shrink tube with the solder in it. Get a little close up of one of those tubes here. So this piece here is the actual solder that you may melt with your heat gun. And the plastic here and these little red pieces, are, I think they're like an epoxy that melts around the wire and makes it waterproof. All right, so it's all set. Let's get my heat gun and start heating it up. Doesn't take too long. I focus on the center and let the heat work its way out and seal up. Now I watch for the solder to kind of break loose and run along the cable. There it is, just did it. I'm done. Doesn't take very long at all. So with that now done, we'll let it cool. And we now have our cable for doing our power balancing. So let's review how this is connected together now with the power balancing uh, connected up. So right here is the output from the controller goes through to the input for the first arch, the outside arch. And then uh, the power balancing line comes through to another T, which I put, which is right in between the second and third arch. Now remember is that the data comes from the outside arch, goes all the way over and then comes back on this arch. So what we're doing is after we had the power drop here, we're inputting power to both sides, it goes both directions, it goes both, both these lines. Therefore, the whole prop is gonna be balanced with power. I'll get it connected up where I can show you the 
amperage draw as well as the uh, the voltages at each of the connection points here um, and you'll see that the the voltage at each of each between each of the arches is going to be pretty close to the same all three uh, arches the inside the middle and the outside all have uh, power going the same, same amount of current to it and that is 11.45 volts all right now let's look at the output of all three of them here is the voltage for the inside arch so we got 10 and a half from basically 11 and a half, so we dropped one volt across it. Perfectly acceptable, you'll get great colors with that. So here's the voltage out of the, out of the outside and the center arches. Uh, the output from that is just uh, about 10 and a half volts. Pretty much the same as the inside one. So all three are essentially the same, uh, same power coming in and same power coming out. So what's going to limit your arches is going to be the current draw. Um, if you're just using one output from a controller. So right now we're at 4.2 roughly amps, which is close to the limit on the output, which is 5 amps. Um, but this is full white, and that's not a normal situation. 60% full white is pushing it pretty much to its limit. Uh, I'll change the uh, sequence to a color wash, and I'll show you how the current drops, which is a more uh, real-life application. So here's the controller in the color wash sequence. And as you watch the current uh, go up and down as the different lights kick on at different intensities, I'm going to say we're close to 2.7 amps maximum, which is pretty much a more of a real life example if you hook these up in your show. Uh, again, I have the controller set at a maximum of 60% brightness. I could probably push to 100 if I wanted to. But I think I'll leave it right here at 60. It should be pretty good in the show. And just a step back here, and you'll see it going through the color wash sequence. So let's do a final walkthrough on the wiring. I have a T. This is a th all or three, three, three T's uh, connected into my input for my the first arch. Then I have my specially made uh, power balancing cable, just two female ends going from one T to the next. And that connects up between the, the middle two arches. All right, so what this does here is it allows me to bring power from the controller to all three arches starting at the beginning. This is where it begins. And then on the other side of the arch, you will just see the outside one connects into the middle and it comes back and then it connects over on the other side and it comes here the inside one is available to connect to the very next set of arch or what other prop you want to hook up to it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, this configuration uses a lot of power and daisy chaining another uh, prop next to it will most likely require some power injection um, if you want to do that. And so this concludes my video on power balancing triple arches. Uh, you took two T's, three, three, three T's and you made a small pigtail with just some simple soldering, uh, two female connectors, uh, very short in length, to power balance your prop. Works really well, as you can see. Uh, the sequence you see playing, I just quickly put together an X-Lights uh, single strand effect. I did red, white, and blue because in two days it's the 4th of July. So I thought I'd begin to celebrate just a little bit early. Uh, I hope this helps somebody out there. Oh, and by the way, um, if there's interest, I'll do a, do a video on how I configure this in X-Lights, uh, how to set up the triple arch effect. So and just let me know if there's any interest in that, and I'll do a video on that. So well, I hope this helps somebody out there, if they're considering putting together these triple arches. Um, you guys have a wonderful day.